Good morning, everyone. Here we are again, down here at Franklin Square Community Church, down here in Latonia, Ohio. So if you haven't heard one of our live broadcasts, come on down. Our service is at 10 o'clock. My scripture today that I'm going to be using is coming out of Luke 19, 28 through 44. And I'm not going to read all that due to the time restraints. But my message today, I'm calling The Ride to Jerusalem. We're starting, this is Palm Sunday. And of course, everybody out there that's watching knows what happened on Palm Sunday. That's when Jesus rode in to Jerusalem. So with that, let's get started. Be sure and read that scripture, though. <clears throat> Jesus knew what he was going to face in Jerusalem. He knew before he ever went there. So the decision to go into Jerusalem must have been one of the most difficult ones he had to make in a long time. And on top of that, to ride in the city on a colt rather than walk as he had done before. That must have even been even a more difficult decision because riding on a colt in the, into the city was a public declaration that he was king. You see, in war times, the conqueror would ride a big prancing stallion. But in times of peace, the king would ride a colt to symbolize that peace prevailed. So Jesus was riding on a colt. He was declaring that he was king. Amen. So you figure, how would the folks respond to this? All the folks, all the people. Maybe some of them would greet him with laughter. They probably would. Maybe they would be amused by what he was doing. They probably after all, it was rather ridiculous. Picture, think about it. He is a carpenter declaring himself to be king. Perhaps some would think, this guy's a lunatic, living in a world of fantasy, imagining himself to be king, and they probably would laugh at him, and they probably did. Others would greet him, with anger, upset because they would interpret his riding into the city as arrogance and blasphemy against God. Of course, many would hail, hail him and with rejoice and joy, welcome him as the earthly king come to reestablish the throne of David over so they could overthrow the Romans. They were ready to put a crown, eager and ready to put a crown upon his head. Among the crowds, there was probably folks there that Jesus had healed. Some had been among the thousand he fed. Many more had seen some of his miracles and listened to as he spoke with authority. They had listened, and their lives have been changed. Jesus knew all this. He knew all this before he ever rode on that colt down the hill. He knew that just over the horizon, over there on the hill of the horizon, he knew the cross. The cross loomed like a monster, ready to consume him. But Luke tells us that the Spirit, despite it all, Sorry, Jesus still, still set his face steadfast to go to Jerusalem. So Jesus rides down the hill into the city. As Jesus rides down toward the gates of the city, the crowd is growing and there are festivity in the air. For it is Passover and there are folks from near and far because it is the greatest Jewish holiday of the season. Even before Jesus arrives, the news 
has spread that Jesus had risen Lazarus from the dead. There was someone going, they were talking. You have heard the news? Have you heard the news? Lazarus died and was buried in a tomb so long that his body became the decaying. And this man, this man called Jesus, called him out of the tomb. And he came out, they stripped him of his grave clothes, and he, and he actually walked and breathed. Surely, surely, the Messiah could have only done that. The news tells, travels from one to another, and the crowds grew on both sides of the road. They had cut palm branches. They were waving them and shouting, Hosanna, Hosanna, to the king, to the king. Jesus looked over to his awaiting audience. He looked at them as he was riding through. And he must have seen the mixture of expressions on their faces. There was those who loved him. Perhaps Bartimaeus was there. The man who received sight. Maybe there was leopards there whose skin was healed. Maybe Jarvis, his daughter, was there. Back to life after experiencing death. Lazarus and Mary and Martha and Mary Magdalene were all there. Their lives reflecting the love that was in their hearts for the man who taught them and molded them and change their lives. The Sadducees and the Pharisees were there. They were there support, supposedly to keep the law and spiritual leaders. But Jesus, Jesus had gained so much popularity that they felt threatened. They were scared. So they felt they were full of jealousy and they watched him closely. It put the old eagle eye on him. The Romans were watching for a sign of rebellion against Rome. Jesus realized as he listened to the Hosannas that soon the threatening voices that were cheering him would draw down, would drown out the voices of love that those crying for him to be king would soon be crying, crucifying, crucifying, for, or just simply, simply standing and saying nothing at all. They were all there in Jerusalem. Their faces, threatening faces, anxious faces, anxious apostles, crowds, trampling almost on top of one another to get to see, to see Jesus. And then suddenly, suddenly, the whole procession stopped dead in its tracks. The folks that were closest to Jesus could see, they realized that it was he who stopped the procession. Then they saw his body begin to shake Maybe at first they thought it was laughter. Everyone was so happy that day. That was the nature of it, joy. Joy was prevailing that day. But when they saw Jesus' face, they saw no evidence of laughter. But what rather they saw was tears, tears. He was not laughing, he was crying. The scripture tells us that Jesus reacted emotionally many times for different scenes that he's seen throughout his ministry. When he saw the poor, when he saw the hungry, when he saw folks sinning, and when he saw the ill, the scripture says that Jesus had great compassion for all these folks, and he did, and he still does. But it only tells us of two times that he cried. One time at the grave of Lazarus, his friend. And the second time was when he looked at Jerusalem. When he looked at Jerusalem on that ride. 
He saw the mixture of faces and the mass of, of humanity crowded there. And he realized the emptiness, the emptiness in their lives. They had not heard the message of peace, which he's been spreading. They did not understand the purpose of his coming at all. As he approached Jerusalem and saw the city, he wept over it and said, If you had only known on this day what would bring you peace, but now it is hidden from your eyes. The days will come. The days will come when your enemies will build an embankment against you and hem you in on other sides and they will destroy you and your children why because you did not recognize the time that god's coming to you you didn't recognize it they had eyes but they didn't see they had ears but they didn't hear they must they missed the whole point of the message that god had given to them the whole point they missed. They missed what was going on that day. All they wanted to see was Jesus. Maybe they come there just to see Lazarus. They were waving palm branches. Palm, palm branches were tied to, to countries that had victory, that had great victories in war. They waved the palm branches. They were showing that they were excited they were expecting Jesus to, to take over and be the general of their armies. One who would lead them to overthrow the Romans. They were saying that they were ready to go to war if he would lead them. But Jesus said, I didn't come for that purpose. No, I came to show you a more exciting way. A more a great way. I came to show you the way of love. Love. He said, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. If someone wants your coat, give them your shirt as well. If they command you to carry their pack a mile, carry it two miles. The nation of Israel had the opportunity to show Rome something new and different. Love. But they missed, they missed the opportunity. But because they did not understand Jesus, because they completely misunderstood his mission, Jesus wept over them because the opportunity would be taken away and they would never, ever have it again. These were God's folks, chosen folks. God loved them and led them out of the wilderness. And he led them into the promised land. But they did not understand the Messiah when he walked in the midst because of that. Because of that, Jesus wept. What a contrast. What a contrast. As he sits upon the beast of burden, he sees the towering temple of God's silhouette against the sky as he rode on down to the city. But beyond that, in years immediately ahead, he sees the armies of Titus surrounding the holy city he sees the temple, stones being taken down, and the whole city being leveled. He sees bodies in the streets and blood running in the gutters. And hundreds of thousands of folks crying because they are starving to death. While Titus waits for Jerusalem to surrender. All of that because they didn't recognize the Messiah when he came, 
how different their lives could have been. How different the history of Israel could have been if only they had recognized the one who came amongst them riding on a colt. Today, folks, just like Jerusalem, we find ourselves in the presence of Jesus. I wonder, just wonder what he may find when he looks into all our faces. Does he see folks concerned about so many things, worried about their job security, worried about their health or the lack of it? Does he see folks who are so busy doing things here and there, so busy that they never bother to consider those things that are eternally important? Does he see folks who recognize him for who he is? The Messiah, the Christ, the Son of God. Folks, I wonder, will he weep once again when he looks into your eyes? Or will he rejoice in heaven? Think about it. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God in the communion of the Holy Spirit. Be with you all until we can all meet again right here next week. Remember, when you ask God into your life, there's only one way to go, and that's up. Thank you. God bless you.